Monday, April the 1st, 2024. And I'm not joking around. I'm moving bees today. Now, the forecast high for today is uh, 7C. That's pretty warm. Uh, the temperatures around here have gone up pretty fast uh, over the last, say, four or five days. Uh, we've, we've had overnight lows down minus 20 or colder as recently as a week ago. And uh, now we're getting overnight loads of barely below freezing. So that's really nice to see because it's April and I want the bees out. So I usually look for overnight lows of minus 10 or warmer. And this year I decided to look for overnight lows of minus five or warmer, just to try something different. And uh, I'm getting my wish because there were no overnight lows of minus 10 or warmer and less than minus five. It's gone from minus 15, minus 20 to, you know, minus four at night. So that's really good news. And so I'm really counting on this little guy today. So you can tell how tired I am. I am tired. Uh, so we're going to get at this and hopefully I don't drop any bees on the ground or nothing. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy this. Out of the building and this is it this is the extent of the apiary at this point and and it does it's not even as good as it looks because there's a lot of pallet mates here that are dead outs I just haven't taken them off the pallet there's 13 colonies here of the 13 uh, you know I, I'm content with the way they look they're not 13 that I expect to die. I might get a couple of more uh, colonies expire before they get going again. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not super emotional over this. I'm very disappointed and very humbled. Uh, however, I'm mystified. I'm going in my ninth season here, and uh, it seems to be getting worse every year. Uh, is that, is that me growing complacent? Is that me getting lazy? Uh, I know I'm getting old and it gets harder every year for me to do this. So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to figure out what's going on. Cause I used to build a winter, you know, between zero and 20% somewhere in there mortality. I've had those numbers and I've had 15%, I've had 5%. I've had zero once. That was my first year too, zero. And that was outdoors, so maybe I better start wintering outdoors again. So I don't really know uh, what to make of this, really. What's the next step? Well, I have to make sure these bees have what they need. I'll be doing assessments on them to make sure there's feed stores um, you know, I've got lots of syrup there if they need syrup, but I have tons of feed frames too, so I don't know that I really need to feed them syrup as much. You might think that there's a stimulative effect from syrups, and, and I don't think you'd be incorrect. Uh, but we will see. Uh, I'm still still absorbing and still processing this, still processing what my spring and my summer is going to look like. Um, I'm concerned about my honey crop because I, I have customers and I have, I've built up a really good following for my product. 
And uh, so I need probably six to 8,000 pounds of honey uh, to, to get through the season. And that's kind of minimum. That doesn't leave me a lot of excess. So we'll get some, uh, we'll get some pollen patties on here. Um, I've got them in the freezer. So what I need to do is I need to go get them out of the freezer and get them in, get them in the house or even in the wood shop where it's warm. Uh, warm them up before I put them on the colonies. And that's the very least I can do for them. I'll do feed checks uh, at, at that time. And uh, if, if they're low, then I think maybe I'll just uh, take some feed frames out of dead outs and put in there. Um, why did they die? Well, that was a good question. I know I had uh, I had uh, amitraz resistant mites last year, and I didn't detect that early enough in order to do anything about it. So they killed most of my colonies. So I'm chalking it up to that most of most of all, you know. And I, you know what? I'm going to rant here a little bit, people. People will talk to me and they'll say, oh, you know, everybody says the bees are dying. Well, the bees are dying. Uh, well, it's pesticides killing the bees. If, if pesticides were our problem, 95% of our problems would be gone. And that's my contention. Because 95% of our problems is the disease and, and viruses that varroa mites uh, vector to our bees. You know, if we didn't have a constant influx of, of vermin and, and pests and disease and parasites from Asia, we'd be fine. Pesticides are none. So I, I just, it's frustrating for me to hear people say, well, the pesticides are killing the bees. Are, are they good for the bees? Probably not, but they're the least of our concerns, really, in my opinion. That's, that's my opinion. What do I do next? It's nothing for me to do now. Now I just clean up the mess that came out of the building and it's substantial. There's a hundred and, uh, well, there'll be 162 dead out boxes to clean up. That's a lot. I've never cleaned up that many in one shot before. Plus there's some over here that died last fall. I've just been sitting there all winter. I'm getting behind. I'm getting behind on this and I, I don't know if I can handle it, to be honest. Anyway, this little orange guy, you can already see him here. He really made all the difference today. What a great tractor. I love that tractor. Well, I'll leave it at that for now. I'll let you know what happens from here on in. Thanks for watching. Take care and have fun. It's Wednesday, April the 3rd, 2024. So I strayed back out here to the apiary. Uh, I haven't been here um, really to do anything uh, since I brought the bees out on Monday. And I'm standing right in the smoke of the uh, smoker here, <laughs> blowing right in my face. But uh, I've decided to take this opportunity here today in order to uh, have, a, have a bit of a look under the hood here of these colonies. Uh, I want to make sure they have enough feed and uh, just want to get an initial assessment on them. So that's why I'm out here right now. It's uh, We've got a little bit of a breeze coming from somewhere in the north so it's a little bit of a cool breeze but it's not too bad it's extremely sunny it's very very bright and uh, this this snow and uh, ice here doesn't doesn't help the the fact that I can't see because it's so bright and uh, it's 7 C right now so 7 C and not much wind uh, there's bees flying all over me here 
around me and there's uh yeah i see quite a bit of well i mean i see activity i wouldn't say there's lots and lots of activity but so i'm sure you're anxious to see under the hood here as am i so i'm actually going to get my marking crayon so that i can write my assessments on these hives uh, as i go and i've had some uh some pollen patties they're global patties actually uh in the house since uh oh i think i brought them in monday when i was done moving and uh i'll probably add one of those to each of these colonies just uh just because that's what i normally do uh, so i'll get my crayon and then we'll we'll sit down here and we'll take a look okay uh so this one's dead out so we only have this one to look at now i'll tell you about an experiment that i ran this this past winter i haven't talked about this on my channel before now and and i want to be clear as to why why i did what i did and what i'm saying and what i'm endorsing and what i'm not i'm not saying anything i'll just tell you what i did i had a subset of 29 colonies that uh, were the same age same age queens same queen source they were in the same yard they were just about as consistent as you could imagine and uh last fall there was a, a product a nutritional product that came along on the market kind of late season and there was no way for me to really uh, take advantage of it or try it out but people i i talked to online uh, they're having some pretty good success with it so what i decided to do was i took 10 of these 29 that i'm talking about and uh, i put uh, uh, it's called appy tablet i put an appy tablet in 10 of the, the 29 so 10 of them got a tablet 19 did not out of this subset and the, the wintering um survivorship here is uh there's uh six of each set left right now so what that means is you think well that's inconclusive it doesn't mean anything because it's 50 50. it's not because there was almost twice as many uh, non-tablet hives at the beginning so is it chance yeah perhaps uh, but that's just the that's just the data so we had six out of 19 uh, left uh, non-tablet and six out of ten left out of the tablet hives so that is all I know and that's all I'm going to say because I'm not uh, selling anything I'm just uh, filling you in on what's going on here this is a non-tablet hive so let's have a look well they look they look vigorous They look pretty decent. I have no complaints so far with that. Bees don't smoke down very good in the cold weather, I've noticed, in the spring particularly. Try to get them out of the way and they don't want to move. I shouldn't be just putting my wax, but I didn't bring a bucket. I want to be clear when I mention something like this tablet. I'm beholden to nobody. And, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of people around that uh, use their forum to promote products, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. Um, but, you know, if somebody's got skin in the game and got something to sell me, then they're going to try and sell me something, right? That's fine. I don't mind that. But the fact is, it's that is what it is. Um, that's not what this is. I'm not trying to sell you anything. The only thing I would try to sell you is if 
there's a product that's really, really working well for me. I'm going to tell you about it so that you can make up your mind and try it yourself. Look at the mold on that. That's kind of nasty. There's lots of feed, but I'm going to take that out just because of the mold. This one's mostly empty too. I can see mite poop in the cells. So that's what killed my bees, is just mites were got out of control. The mites became resistant to amateurs. I didn't catch that early enough to do anything about it. that story frame on the outside for now so I can get some feed frames in closer there's a little bit of feed here yeah but these are you know my bees usually aren't very light in the spring and these are light now this queen I see her she's not marked I'll have to check with the guy where I got these queens. Because if she was marked when I got the bees, then it means she's a descendant. No brood at all. Okay, so this is pretty well the extent. There's a little bit. Oh, there's some bees here still, but there's not going to be anything interesting. It's mostly feed. Okay, all right, we'll push that back over and then uh, get some more feed in this hive. They're not, they're not starving, but I might as well use those feed frames. Six, seven, eight, we can get two in there. for them. This is the uh, global with the Apis Biologics built in. I'm going to cut that in two so that I can put it like that in case I put a pail on I don't want the patty right under the, the feed hole. Okay so this is a I think I'm going to call this a two. This is also looking not too bad. The sun is low here, so casting that shadow. That wax on my little courtyard here, I can get that later. Get out my solar wax melter, put it in there. Uh, kind of all over me here. Okay, so this wax right here seems softer. It doesn't just shatter and, and uh, blow up when I hit it with the hive tool. So what does that mean? Maybe nothing. But maybe it means that root chamber is a little warmer than the other one. Why would it be warmer? Well, the brood chamber runs warmer when the colony is brooding. That's empty. That is empty. And these are all old bees too. <laughs> they just fly <laughs> everywhere. Oh, they're all over me. Oh, 
Oh, outside frame is nothing on it. It's not very well drawn, which is a no-no. You shouldn't send a colony into winter with a frame that's not well drawn. So this one, uh, this one also had no tablet. It actually looks pretty good. This is just empty. These combs are just empty. Oy. It's really hard to break into springtime hives. It's empty, but it's uh, it's got what's probably chilled brood in it. But that's a probably, right? So I'll leave that one in here. A plastic frame. I hate plastic frames. I shouldn't say I hate them. I prefer the wooden frame with the plastic foundation. <laughs> Something I never really understood before I worked with no gloves is the heat that you can feel emanating from that hive. It's quite a bit. Okay. There's uh, little to no feed at all in here. Unless there's some here. But I'm going to put quite a bit in here. Okay, that one's that one's got some, I think. There's some. Okay, there's four, so I can bring six. Put this in the center. So what do you call that? Two or three? Well, it's tough to see. I would call that a two. We'll see where it goes. This one looks good from here. Maybe not the biggest, but they seem to have the right attitude. It's pretty light, not much left in this one. There's the queen, and she's not marked either. Right here. So leave her alone. Don't muck with the queen. There's a sealed brood here, but is it alive? <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. Boy, there's bees everywhere. I'll bet you my back is covered in bees. Okay, so I'm gonna call mm -hmm. this the nest if if I may. And I'll just move, move this one in. This on the outside, it's got some feet on it too. can get I can get some frames to replace these okay should only like have these boxes open so long gotta work 
swiftly. I okay, need one more frame. Look at this stage, I'm happy with this colony, so I'll give them a two as well. They're not the biggest colony, but they, I think they've got the right idea. Like I say, one is probably won't make it, so they definitely have a good chance here. Okay, this is a hive that had a tablet, it still does. And the bees are very, very loose. They're everywhere. They're on top of the foamy. They're not clustered tightly. And again, I'm, I'm looking at this real time here with you. I have no conclusions about this tablet other than the statistics that I've shared already. So that was about, that was early November. Oh, got up my sleeve and stung me. It was early November. And this is uh, the 3rd of April. Okay, that's a nice frame of feed. People will call it honey, I, I, and that's okay. I don't call it honey because honey isn't made of sugar syrup. That's all what we got here. Another feed frame, it's kind of half a feed frame there. And there's the queen, and red duck queen, come up here to see what's going on. Make sure we can protect her. I, I see eggs in that frame. I do, I do. Okay, so she'll be here on this frame. So I want to be very careful with this tablet if I can. It looks mushy, but it's not. Okay, this is a very light frame. There's the queen right there. Yeah, boy oh boy, that's risky. That's a little brood nest. She's got larvae in there. So I'm just gonna move this one over. I'll leave that tablet there. These are these are light, there's nothing in these. I don't think there's I don't think there's any brood. There wouldn't be brood this far out. I don't think. No. So these will be empties. I did see some of these tablet hives in the winter and they were kind of spread around in the in the hive. The bees were spread around in the hive and I was a little concerned about the feed stores. If they're not clustered, if they're too if they're too active. I was concerned they'd be eating a bit too much. There's some feet on that, I'll leave it. Uh, I'll push this one over. This one back in here. Seven, There's three more. Found three nice heavy ones. Nice and heavy. Look at that, just solid, solid energy right there. And these are, are uh, a little cold, but they're, they've been indoors. They've been in the wood shop. And I turned the temperature up in there to 20C, just so these would be warmish. So I need a patty. Okay. 
They don't like to go down <laughs> in the spring. It's hard to smoke them down. There we go. Down. There. Oh, this is the here. Yeah. And what will we give them? Let's give them a two because they're not super big. I think they're well on their way, but I don't think they're uh, quite a three. Uh, it's been a while since uh, we've spent time in the apiary, hasn't it? Been much in the apiary since August. Okay, a little cluster. This is another tablet hive. See this? Oh, somebody forgot an abor strip. Well, that's not good. That is not good at all. That's me. Missed it. See, this wax that I'm scraping here, here and all the way around, it just kind of shatters when I hit it. But, but this wax, this is, some of it seems uh, like it's a little more malleable, meaning it's warmer. So let's see what's going on here. It's not a very big cluster, is it? A lot of mold here. Oh boy. Not gonna do it today, but I need to come and swap these bottom boards out. Okay, what's going on? This is plastic frame, it's got nothing in it. Nothing. Oh boy. Okay, I guess Ian's not the only one that's on the verge here. Looks like I'm on the verge too. I don't know if the tablet makes them consume more feed or feed more quickly for sure see there's the other one that's bad thing boy you don't do that that is bad deal leave that stuff in in the winter many reasons not least of which it's illegal You saw it here first. Boy, that's a small cluster, isn't it? I wonder if they're just running out of food. Well, there's plenty of food here. Let's see if I can eyeball a queen. You know? They're just hanging out in the front here. I didn't see a queen. Doesn't mean they don't have one. It just means I didn't see one. Okay, this is I'll take this one out too. It's heavy but it's moldy. These aren't slam full, but they've got quite a bit of feed in them. This one, these got uh, sour tummies. So they may not make it. anyway they're really small that's a one they might not make it oh yeah this is a zero this is a zero They were weak all winter. They didn't even eat any of this. They pooped on my arm. Yeah. See, they just got too small. I 
don't think they don't think they're gonna make it. The queen might have died already. Oh, the queen's there. What a cracky she's laying eggs too. Okay. Then what I'll do is I'll give them one of these feed frames. Old beekeeper showed me this trick. Open that feed up so they can use it easily. I'm not going to put any more frames in this, I'll just move them around so they can access feed because they're probably not going to make it. They're trying. I'll give them a patty anyway. Give them a half a patty for their efforts. So that is a non tablet hive. This is a tablet hive. It's always very uh, alive. Very vigorous. I don't know if that's a good thing, you know. There are times when they should be resting. There's a little more of that one left than some of the others. Yeah, that's uh, very lean there. Feeding that, but it's moldy. A little bit of poop on the top bars here. Some of that's kind of normal, you know. That just happens. Oh yeah, they're they are low. They are low. I need to look and see which frames I can take out so I can put some feed frames in. So there's feed on this one. Okay. Okay, this this one's heavy. That's nice. Alright, so I'm gonna put four in here. remnants back. I'll give them a solid two. The plug fell out. Give them a good solid two. This is a non tablet hive and they certainly are animated as well. Oh, nice. So there's quite a bit of mold here, isn't there? Just yank it. That's not good form at all. It's feet or not, but it's moldy. So we'll take it out. Next week I'm going to pick a warm day, come out here and change these boxes and uh, bottom boards out. Get rid of this mold. And the mold doesn't really harm the bees a whole lot though, so don't get too concerned about it. There's a nice little cluster here. I'm pretty pleased with that. This uh, this did not have a tablet. So 
are very light. There's not any feed in these at all. But they're nicely laid out there on the frame. I wonder if they got a little nest going. Oh yeah, oh the heat. Okay, I'm gonna not monkey around in there. Uh, particularly, I don't wanna harm the queen. We'll just, hey, there's, there's feet there. Get rid of some of these moldy ones on the end. That's not too bad. You know what, I'm gonna leave that. I'll replace, I'll replace these two on the end. Nice fat lead frames here. Patty patty. Well, one of the nicest ones does not have a tablet. Interesting. No tablet here and no tablet on the last one. Oh, this looks nice. Oh, I pulled the last one out and it's covering the bees. I just hope, I hope the queen wasn't there. I shouldn't even do that because the number of times I've seen the queen walking around on the wall. It's a little too dangerous. Okay. Yeah, there's bees everywhere. There's uh, wall to wall in here. Okay, this is nice. This is going to be a three for sure. They actually have feed. There's feed, feed stores in here. So they might be okay for now. Ow. Oh. Hanging on to that frame and she stings me right under the arm. She pooped on me, then she stung me. Talk about disrespect, eh? Okay, put this back together. Go up the sleeve of my t-shirt and then I pinch them and they freak out and sting me. As they will. Alright. Give that a nice all three. Three. Also, no tablet on this one. Not bad looking at all. Uh, not quite as big, but I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing. Why oh, bees everywhere? Holy smokes. Oh. All right, we'll try and start on this side. Yeah, they're kind of getting. Always heard busting into a spring colony. I can't push the frames side to side is the problem here. I might not do much with this one, I just want to make sure they have feed on board. Which is kind of the order of the day. Okay, is there feed on this one? Uh, there's a little bit of feet on that. Look at the bees! Mm -hmm. Lovely looking. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Mm -hmm. This is a three. Not huge, but they look like they're happy. Mm -hmm. I'm not going for them. So I'll just put that back in there. Put my patty. Oh, 
plus the fact that I'm tired and my back is sore. Gotta wrap this up. Three. How fast we get out of shape with this. My back is killing me. I'm pooped. I've worked 12 colonies. <laughs> I should be able to work about 75 <laughs> in a day. But regardless, I worked until 2 in the afternoon before I started this, so I wasn't exactly fresh. All right, well, uh, okay, so there's 12 here, and there's only there's only one or two that I, I, I mean that one, you saw that one, it was tiny. I, I'm sure it's not going to make it, and there's nothing I can do about that yet. It's not warm enough to do anything with that. Uh... So I think there was another one that was kind of pokey. Um, so you know what, I'm, I'm looking at maybe 10 here when all is said and done. Um, yeah, that's not 175, but it's 10. So, you know, we have to go from there. Use 10. And you know what, um, I haven't been, I haven't been uh, replying to comments on my video about when I brought my bees out on Monday. Uh, but I've been reading every one of them. I've I've gotten emails. I've gotten uh, messenger messages, and I'm humbled. You know, I really am. Um, trying to put on a brave face here, <laughs> um, and I'm doing okay, but. You know, the kind of support and, and encouragement that that people have been giving me uh, through those mediums um, is just overwhelming. It is really overwhelming. You know, this YouTube thing is just a hobby for me. And, and I always say I'm not a YouTuber, I'm just a beekeeper. But, you know, the community that has arisen through YouTube, and not just my channel... Uh, YouTube in general, the community that's arisen through that is quite remarkable. And, you know, to have the kind of outpouring of support and encouragement that I've gotten over the last couple of days since that video came out uh, is is quite, uh, quite remarkably, quite remarkable. I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. I'm speechless over it. But thank you. Thank you to everyone who has shown, you know, uh, um, everyone has shown s support. They've shown, you know, condolences have been, the word has been used. Um, many people have offered help in various ways. You know, I wish I could help, but I'm nowhere near you. And I understand, I completely understand. I don't want anybody getting on an airplane and coming here to to work because there's no work. <laughs> Well, there's 160 dead outs to clean, but that's all. Um, I can work my whole apiary in an hour. This It's not an overwhelming amount of work yet. I hope it is uh, come May, June, uh, because uh, I want to get queen rearing going again full force. And that is going to be a little challenging with, um, you know, 10 colonies here. Uh, do I run these 10 for honey? Um, I run these 10 for honey, I'll make a thousand pounds of honey. <laughs> I should have, you know, between five and eight thousand pounds to do me for the year. So it's hard to know. Do you just throw in a towel and bust them all up for queen rearing? Uh, that might happen. I'm, I'm a long-term thinker, I'm a big picture thinker. So this temporal situation, <laughs> Uh, doesn't destroy me it discourages mm -hmm. me and it frustrates me because uh, this is my ninth season I should be better at this than I am you know and uh, these varroa mites boy it's just hard to stay on top of them you know it's a lot of work and it's a lot of expense too so we need some better ways to do this I hope that the uh, queen genetics is uh, going to really uh, be fruitful as far as beating these little buggers. But anyway, 
I just wanted to say that. Thank you so much for all of the kind words and offers of support, offers of help. Um, don't, you know, don't be sending me money. Don't be sending me bees and queens and stuff. I mean, I guess you can if you want, but that's not my plan. My plan isn't to ride on your back. Uh, I appreciate the support, though. I do. I really do. Your encouragement is, is uh, you know, that's really what I need, is your encouragement. So, I will leave it at that. And we'll tackle stuff again tomorrow. I should be getting, I guess, some liquid feed on these. Uh, I'm, I'm just not quite convinced about the temperatures yet. I think I'm going to look at next week. We'll get some liquid feed, perhaps, on these to go with those patties. I think liquid feed helps them understand that they should start the brooding cycle. Uh, but it is the 3rd of April, so I don't expect a lot of brood yet. I'm, I'm pleased to see brood in some of them. So we'll, we'll go from there. There's a nice new fluffy one sitting right there. So there's something going on here. There is, uh, stuff is happening. Some of these colonies are doing really well. And I will leave it at that. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me. I love having company in the... I've got one in my shirt. Oh my goodness, that's what I'm feeling. And uh, so I'll say goodbye because i got to get this bee out of my shirt. So take care and have fun. Wish me well with this bee. It's Friday, April 5th, 2024. Now you know what that means, right? Yeah, you know what that means. <laughs> now it's only three more days of work this week. You know that. Finally got back to building uh, covers here. I've got about 50 to go. Uh, I had to spend time drilling the feed holes in those with the drill press. Boy, I'm thankful for that nice uh, 20 inch drill press. It's not a real high end expensive 20 inch drill press, but it uh, sure does the job. And so you can't quite see there, but I got my pieces laid out and my assembly station set up here again to assemble hopefully the last of the covers. Um, I think I have enough parts here, but sometimes I get down to the end and I don't have enough parts to finish the last one or two. But anyway, that's going well. Uh, it takes a while. I, I just can't stand to uh, stand here too long building covers. Uh, so I've only built five yet today, but I've just come back from lunch. So I'm going to bang out a few more. Uh, I'll show you something else that I did here uh, over the last couple of days. So I spent, uh, actually I spent a couple of days doing this, um, among other things. I worked my bees too a little bit and did a bunch of other stuff. But uh, the last couple of days I packed a bunch of honey and some of it's here. So I've got, I've got three, three kg pails of liquid honey. Uh, well, all the, all the honey I packed is liquid. And then I have some, some five kg liquid honeys and most of what's on this skid here is one kg jars there's some half kgs there as well just a few uh, so uh, one of the reasons that i did this is as you know uh, as you may know from my channel um, i take honey into winnipeg regularly to a I, it's a packing plant but it's not a it's probably not even as big as my wood shop it might be as big as my wood shop it's very small. It's a very, uh, it's a small business that uh, does specialty honeys, flavored honeys and whatnot. And uh, the owner is a good friend. Um, and so he's federally inspected and, and uh, licensed to pack honey under, fed, under fed, federal regulations. If I'm selling honey directly, I can sell, I can pack it here at home. Um, if I'm selling honey in a store then the rules are that i need to have that honey packed as a federal federally regulated process so that's why i take it into the city um, i would rather not put um, you know 100 miles on the honey just to get it packed because i can do that here but i want to follow those rules and so that's what i do and so, yes, so this honey here, uh, I pack myself, and this is nothing new. I, I do this from time to time. 
uh, then I can sell that here from the yard. I can sell this at markets coming up this summer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but one of the things I got coming up this, this month that I, I want to tell you about, we don't do very many markets. We're probably scheduled to do uh, three markets this year. Uh, there's one um, July 1st. July 1st is Canada's uh, national holiday that would be the most like America's 4th of July. So July 1st is Canada Day, and uh, we are going to be doing another one. It's usually the end of November, sometimes early December, uh, as a Christmas market. So that's about all we're going to be doing this year. Uh, except for the 20th of uh, April, there's a banquet. And there's a banquet for uh, an organization called YFC. And that stands for Youth for Christ. And uh, so Youth for Christ is actually my uh, business's charity that I support. Uh, so um, I give a portion of my sales every month to YFC. And we have a local chapter here in, in Selkirk and run by a really nice team of people. Uh, they do really great work. Uh, their mandate is to, as as you might guess, to mentor young people, uh, take them in whatever situation they have, and and show them that they they belong and that they matter. Um, you know, in today's world, it's such a hard thing to be a young person uh, growing up. I can't imagine growing up in this world. It's such a crazy world. Uh, but so they do they do very very good work there, and. Uh, and I support them in that. Uh, so, so a lot of this honey, or at least some of this honey, will be going to this banquet. And what I what I did last year is the first time I did this was last year, uh, and it was a lot of fun. Is I took some honey to the banquet, and this was at the the invitation of the organizers, and they said uh, set up a table over over on the side, and then you can sell honey there. And, and I told her, I said, okay, I'll do that on a one condition. She said, what? I'll do that on one condition that you let me give you 100% of the proceeds from the honey. And I'll donate all the honey. People can buy it. And then all of that money goes to the, goes to the organization. And she said, well, okay, <laughs> I won't argue with that, she says. Uh, so that was good. And the thing about it is, though, I didn't take nearly enough honey. There was lots of people who didn't get honey. Uh, so this year I plan to rectify that and I'm going to take a lot more honey uh, to sell at that table. So that really warms my heart to be able to do that. Uh, you know, people say, well, why do you do that? Well, I do it for one simple reason, because it's the right thing to do, right? It's the right thing to do to help out other people. Uh, so that's where some of this honey is going to be going. Um, I can sell it directly. And, and yeah, I can save a little bit of money. I don't have to haul it to the city and I don't have to pay a packer to pack it. So reduces my cost a little bit and it allows me then to give 100% of those proceeds to the charity. Um, and so that's kind of what I've been doing, uh, filling these pails and, and jars and whatnot. So just thought I'd share that with you, what, what's been going on here. Um, you know, this loss of my bees uh, it, I'm overwhelmed by people, uh, people phoning me, people emailing me and sending me messages and commenting on my video. Uh, people are so generous. And when people, they contact me and they tell me, you know, how they're feeling for me and whatnot, it's just really touching. It's really touching. I had a guy phone this morning and a beekeeper I've known for most of my career beekeeping uh he's 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 an older fella and he's been beekeeping a long time he's a very good beekeeper um commercial guy he sells hundreds of nukes every year and he says you know if you need nukes you just let me know and we'll we'll work something out for you to get some nukes in there so i i may do that uh, i said thank you i really appreciate that i may do that um, i'm not making any decisions right now so we'll wait uh, I need to speak for those nukes probably early May if I want them so I'll see I have to see what uh, what goes on I wasn't insured this year so it was a bad year to not be insured you, you make this business decisions and sometimes they don't work out very well uh, so anyway that's uh, that's just what's going on and I'm I'm working at coverage here 
and I'll be working at covers here for probably another week. Uh, there's always distractions now. After the bees come out, um, the wood shop slows down to about 75% speed. Um, and that's frustrating, but that's just the way it is. That is just the way it is. Another week on covers, and then 118 pallets. Might take me another month or so. I will see. That's where we're at. Um, thanks for all your concern. I, I'm touched, and uh, I don't know what to say. I'm not, not the kind of guy with those kind of words, so I, I really appreciate it. I do appreciate it so much. I've had friends come over and show their support, and uh, I wouldn't say I need a shoulder to cry on because I'm not crying. Uh, I just have to make the right moves, make smart moves at the right time, don't just, you know, sit on my hands or anything. Um, I have to get out of bed in the morning and I have to go on and do my work and get my covers and my pallets done. And I have to, boy, I have to clean out that building yet. There's still dead bees in there. Oh my goodness, they never stink. But I have to do that. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is, is take a scoop shovel and shovel them into the bucket of the tractor so that I don't have to touch them again. I just dump them in. I don't know where I'm going to dump them. People say dump them on your garden. Maybe I might do that. Uh, but I don't think I want a scoop shovel. So maybe tomorrow I'm going to go to town. I'll buy myself a brand new scoop shovel to make myself feel good. And then, and then I have to go and clean. Because it, it stinks worse than a pig barn in there right now. Boy, does it ever stink. I can already stand to be in there. Uh, so I need to scoop those up and get them out wash the place down, get it ready for other purposes. And I so much appreciate you watching. And thanks for the really great comments. And, uh, um, you know, it's really touching. I mean, this is, this is really is a community, right? Uh, this kind of thing just reinforces the fact that this is a community. It's not just, it's not just a channel. It's not just, you know, random people. It's not just disconnect, disconnected, you know, entertainment and stuff. Um, I just so much appreciate you all. Okay, I will say goodbye now for the week and uh, just say take care, say, stay safe, and have fun. It's so hard to get them out of your shirt. Okay, she didn't sting me.